Oh, good morning. It's dark. What happened? Two weeks ago it was sunny. Winter is here. Anyhow, I got a lot to talk about because last week I, I, I was going to do a show and um, something came up with a client. I have a real job. And um, so I couldn't do it. So I'm going to try to smash everything into one today. So I'm going to talk about four films, a real mixed bag from all over the world. The first one being a Taiwanese film. Um, oh, my client just got back to me. Okay, a Taiwanese film called Dear Tenant, and the Chinese name is Chen Ai De Lu Ke, which is a direct translation to um, Dear Tenant. Now, this, um, I don't know if you know about Taiwan, but in May, 20, May 2019, so May, a year ago, May, Taiwan became the first country in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage. Now, don't bother arguing with me whether Taiwan's a country or not. I don't even want to go there. But, well, I used to live there. But, I mean, I don't want to talk about whether they're a country or not. But while that was a, a momentous ruling for really what is, you know, this is a very traditional part of the world here, gay rights activists in Taiwan still have further to go before they get real equality under the law. Now, for example, same-sex couples are still unable to legally adopt children. And that subject forms the backdrop to this film, sort of. Now, the film is about, very briefly, for the past five years, we have Lin Chen Yi, who's played by Mo Zi Yi, um, I don't know who Mo Zi Yi is, but anyhow, he's a Taiwanese actor. He's been looking after his elderly landlady, Mrs. Zhou, and her nine-year-old grandson, Yo Yu, at their modest flat in Kaohsiung's Port District. Now, I used to live in Kaohsiung, so I know the Port District quite well. And in fact, there were a couple scenes in the film where I was going, oh, I know where that is, oh, I know where that is. Now, as we've come to learn uh, through flashbacks, Lin was the partner of Zhou's son and Yo Yu's father, Li Wei who passed away five years earlier. Now, after the old lady herself passes away from late-stage diabetes, her ne'er-do-well son, Li Gang, who's played by Jay Shu, uh, Shu, um, Jay Shu was the star of Turnaround, which was a very nice Taiwanese film from a year ago last summer. Um, I think he's also a singer, if I remember correctly. Anyhow, he returns from China, expecting to inherit her flat. But he's surprised to learn that Mrs. Joe not only left the flat to little Yo Yu, the boy has also been legally adopted by Qian Yi, which, as I said above, would be impossible. Um, Li Gang contacts the police, accusing Qian Yi of killing his mother, and as the police investigate, evidence begins to mount around Qian Yi. Did he have a nefarious plan by adopting the little boy? So, anyhow, um, we have a very interesting movie. It's written and directed by Cheng Yo Che. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it has the potential to be a pretty decent procedural drama. But Cheng takes the story on a completely different track. And slowly, and sometimes painfully slowly, revealing how Chen Yi came to adopting Yo Yu and how Mrs. Zhou died so suddenly. Those are the two mysteries of the story. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really jive with the, situ with the reality of the situation in Taiwan today, which is what I've just said. Now, Kaohsiung and its police force in particular is portrayed as being very provincial. Now, I lived there a long time ago, and it was very provincial back then, but I think it's changed a little bit. But anyhow, in the movie, the, the people, the, the police in particular, they're looking down on gay people and how they choose to live their lives. Well, at the same, but at the same time, they're accepting, fully accepting that a gay man can legally adopt a child who is not biologically his. So you have this, you know, this uh, str strange um, uh, understanding, you know, you have, well, on one hand, they don't like gays, but the other hand, you know, it's okay if gays adopt, which is just the complete opposite of the reality of the situation. Now, the adoption issue is all the more unbelievable, as Yo Yu's mother is still very much alive, and even, even the most liberal of judges would certainly grant her custody over Chen Yi. Now, even if she would be deemed, to, be deemed unfit to care for the boy, and we're given no indication that that's even the case, Chen Yi would not be allowed to adopt the child. Now, story problems aside, Cheng gets good performances out of his cast, particularly Mo, who portrays Chen Yi as a tender lover, devoted friend, committed caregiver, and caring father. Now, the actor took home the Best Actor Award at the Taipei Film Festival in July, and although the director throws in a couple of plot twists late in the story, 
one that is clearly visible a mile away, and the other is completely out of left field. Dear Tenant is still, it's an interesting tale of unconditional love in a non-traditional family. And actually, that theme is going to be repeated in the fourth film. I'm going to talk about it. Just realize that. Now, Dear Tenet uh, opened last week. It was one of the films I was going to talk about last week. So it opened last week here in Hong Kong. The film is up for six Golden Horse Awards, which is taking place tomorrow night, Saturday night. Now, even with its improbable premise, I think it's still worth checking out. I thought it was a pretty good film. Story problems, but I thought good performances. I thought it was an interesting story. Although, you know, of course, not realistic, but I, on the whole, I liked it. So that's called Dear Tenant. It's from Taiwan. As I said, playing here in Hong Kong, I don't know if it's playing elsewhere. I know it's done pretty well on the festival circuit, so it might just come to a cinema. Well, assuming you have a cinema, um, but, you know, it might come to a place near you one day. All right, that's the first film I want to talk about. The second film also opened last week in a completely different vein, called Freaky. Now, October, very interestingly, here in, in Hong Kong, October has seemingly bled into November, and I use the word bled on purpose, and our cinemas are still doling out this year's crop of horrors and thrillers meant to delight and scare audiences. And the latest to arrive is Freaky, which is a, which is a genre mashup by co-writer and director Christopher Landon, who did Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You. So if you like those films, you might just like this one too. Now what it's about, we have the fictional town of Blissfield, what a name, Blissfield, and it's known by its residents as the home of the Blissfield Butcher, who's a serial killer whose exploits make for great tales around a campfire. Now after an absence of a number of years, the Butcher, who's played by Vince Vaughn, I think everybody knows him, Vince Vaughn, from Wedding Crashers and Dodgeball and The Breakup. He was also in Hacksaw Ridge a couple of years ago. He suddenly returns, taking out four students from Blissfield Valley High in the most creatively gruesome ways. In the process, he finds an ancient dagger named La Dola. Now we have Millie, who's played by Catherine Newton. Um... She had some small parts in Ben is Back and Three Billboards Outside Epping, Missouri and Lady Bird. Lady Bird, uh, people might know her from TV's Big Little Lies, which I've never seen. But anyhow, she plays a bullied, a bullied teenager at that school. And after one of the school's football games where she's the, the team's mascot, she becomes the butcher's next victim. Now, but of course because it's a horror film. It's Friday the 13th and it's a full moon night. And as the butcher stabs Millie, something mysterious happens that causes the pair to switch bodies. Now, I'm not revealing too much here because that's all in the trailer. Um, now, the legend of Ladola is such that if Millie doesn't stab the butcher back within 24 hours, she'll be permanently stuck inside his body. And vice versa, of course. Now, with the help of her best friends Nyla, played by Celeste O'Connor, and Josh, played by Misha o Osharovich, if you're one of the three people who saw the goldfinch, you would know who he is. Um, Millie, looking like the butcher, schemes to trap the butcher, looking like Millie, before he, she, she, he can kill more people. You, you, you know what I mean. Now, it isn't easy for the trio, as nobody believes them. Now, Mal Freaky is a melange of a few films. We have Freaky Friday where two people switch bodies. We have Friday the 13th, which involves a serial killer slash slasher who wears a mask. And The Hot Chick, where a woman inhabits, inhabits a man's body and vice versa. Now, in fact, the film's original title was Freaky Friday the 13th. But I think the producers may have been concerned about a possible lawsuit and they got the title shortened to just Freaky. Now, for the most part, Freaky is a fairly enjoyable romp. Thanks to Vaughn's completely campy performance as a 17-year-old girl who's trapped in the, in the body of a 6 foot 5 inch middle-aged man. Now the actor, Vaughn, for, for, who's built his career on his macho persona, he tosses all that out the window in a borderline creepy but ultimately humorous scene involving Millie's crush. Uh, football jock Booker Strode, played by Uri Uriah Shelton, he was in the TV show Girl Meets World. And, but, you know, so that, that, was, that was interesting, you know, and good for him for doing it. Late career, you know, mix-up. Um, 
Now, Newton, however, is less impressive the other way around. You know, her character is simply reduced to looking menacing. Not a lot of, not a lot of range there. Now, she does have one good moment, though, as um, uh, when she wreaks havoc on Millie's bullying woodshop teacher, played by Mr. or woodshop teacher by the name of Mr. Fletcher, who's played by Alan Ruck, who was in Ferris Days. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I haven't seen Alan Ruck in a long Well, we've seen him, but not on the screen. Um, so that was, that was fun. Now, but I have to ask, now here's the big thing. Why does every slasher film have a scene where a character goes down to the basement or walks around in a dimly lit house? I don't know about you, but when I'm home alone at night, I have every freaking light in the house on. Now, but anyhow, Freaky is playing now. It opened last week here in Hong Kong. It's playing now. You know what? It's not as much fun as Landon's previous genre mashup, but it's not bad. You know, it's, 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 it's a fun. It's a fun 90 odd minutes or 100 minutes. I forget how long it is. Um, yeah, check it out. Definitely go see it. Um, you know, has, has some good moments, especially Vince Vaughn. Okay. Third film. How am I doing on time? Not bad. Third film I want to talk about opened yesterday. It's a local film, local Hong Kong film called Memories to Choke on Drinks to Wash Them Down. Long title. Now, we here in Hong Kong, we've been a lot in the news a lot lately <laughs> in the past year. First because of our anti-government protests and lately because of the government's clamp down on our democratic institutions. Now, what hasn't made the news here though is not all that much has changed here since then. You know, life has gone on, you know. Now, of course, the pandemic has hit some sectors of our economy very hard, although some people here will blame the downturn on the protests, but that's not true. That's a lie. Um, but we've been very successful at managing the situation of the, of the COVID thanks to universal mask wearing, social distancing, and rigorous hygiene that began at the end of January. So all you pansies out there who are just like, oh, you know, mask and, you know, abrogating my rights, oh, it's uncomfortable, I can't breathe, suck it up. We've been doing it since January. Now today, because we've been doing it since January, everything is open. Now there are restrictions, but everything is open. And we only have a couple of new cases of infection reported each day. I think yesterday we had four and everybody's freaking out, you know, because that's a lot for us. Now, if there are a few things you can say about Hong Kong people, though, it's that we're pragmatic and we're resilient. Give us a bunch of lemons, we'll make lemonade. Now here in this movie we have Suk Suk cinematographer. Actually, I saw Suk Suk, but I didn't review it. Um, I know it did very well at the box office and on the international festival circuit. Um, Suk Suk cinematographer Lung Ming Kai and his wife Kate Riley. She's American. He's local. Um, they've written, directed, and produced an anthology of three fictional and one documentary short films with the this unbearably long title of Memories to Choke on Drinks to Wash Them Down. And it looks at, these films look at the lives of some of the everyday people here who basically turn lemons into lemonade. Now the first film, I'll tell you a little bit about each film. The first film is called Forbidden City and it tells the story of an old Chinese woman and her very patient Indonesian helper. Both of them are immigrants to Hong Kong who live in the quiet middle-class suburb of Yunlong, which is just next door to where I live. And it's far from the bright lights and big city of, of bright lights and noise of the big city. On this day, the old woman decides to head downtown to meet up with some of her friends, but the hel helper is under strict orders from the woman's son not to take the his mother very far from a flat. Now, fortunately, the helper is both very smart and she's resourceful and she's able to find a way to make everybody happy. So that's what that one's about. The second film is called Toy Stories, not Toy Story, one, two, three, four. This is Toy Stories, although there really is one story. But anyhow, it's about two young adult brothers who meet up at their mother's soon to be sold toy shop in the working class district of Sham Shui Po. Now, while one of them hints at the financial burdens he has being married with a child, the other has ideas to keep the business and turn it around. So that was, that was, it's a, that was a very nice story. Um, they're all nice, actually. But in the third film, we have Yin Young, um, and uh, that's the name of the film. And it's about a local high school economics teacher and an American net teacher. Now, a net teacher is a native English teacher, and the net teacher is played by Riley herself. And they bond over Hong Kong's after-school snack culture. 
Now, yin yang is, in fact, <clears throat> excuse me, a coffee, speaking of coffee, mm. oh, thank God for coffee. Yin yang is a coffee and tea concoction. It's basically coffee flavored tea or tea flavored coffee, take your choice. That is very popular with the locals. I never liked it. But here it takes on even more meaning as the pair discuss life, goals, nostalgia, um, and a few other things over the course of the school year. That was a very nice film. Um, finally, the last film we have is the documentary. It's called It's Not Going to Be Fun, and it profiles the free-spirited Je Jessica Lamsing Tong as she runs for a seat in Shem Shui Po uh, in last year's district council elections. Now, in any other year, Lam wouldn't stand a chance of winning, but the emotions are high, or they were high back then. They're still high today. And anger against pro-government candidates is strong. Now, in fact, if you don't know, in the district count, in those district council elections, the pro-democratic forces, although she was an she ran as an independent, um, the pro-democratic forces took home 18 of the 19 seats. That's how strong the anger was against the pro-establishment candidates. So the question here is, will Jessica become Hong Kong's AOC? I find the, the comparison quite funny. In one respect, I think it's quite accurate, but you know, in terms of um, intellect and uh, uh, in terms of uh, diction, <laughs> you know, ability to string a sentence together, uh, no, no comparison. But anyhow, that's Hong Kong. Um, now, here's the here's the the bottom line with the movie. Now, Lung and Riley they've created a really nice snapshot of contemporary Hong Kong life. But I think it'll probably appeal more to Hong Kongers, those who are living here and those who are living overseas, than anyone else. I don't know that this movie really has legs um, to be of any interest to anybody who either doesn't live here or doesn't really know what's going on here. But anyhow, for us here, I thought it was okay, you know. Now, unfortunately, the stories are a little rough around the edges, there, and there isn't much to tie them together other than the obvious. Of the three fictional stories, only Forbidden City, the first one seems complete, but the other two, I, I like the other two, but, but they were incomplete, in my opinion. But they certainly provide a good foundation for expansion into future like films of their own. I hope they do, they take one or two of these films and expand on it and turn it into a film. I think there's a lot of potential there. Now, the documentary on Lamb, it doesn't fit in at all. Um, it was interesting, but it doesn't fit. And I think it might best be served <clears throat> as an illustration of what many young people are thinking these days. Not that anybody in power really cares what young people are thinking, but that's a whole other issue. Now, so Memories to Choke On, I'm going to say the short title, Memories to Choke, to Choke On opened yesterday here in Hong Kong. It's not perfect, but I think it's still worth checking out if you want to support the home team. Memories to choke on. Not sure where it's playing, but you can look it up. All right, finally, I'm making good time here. Finally, we have the Korean film Pawn, or in Korean, it's called Dumbo, Tumbo, Tumbo, Dumbo, I don't know, something like that. Tumbo is a, is a pawn, it's a direct translation. Um, I haven't I haven't actually written my review, but anyhow, here's here's basically the bottom line. Who knew that you could turn a story about kidnapping into a fingers in your cheek family movie? Clearly, somebody in Korea did. The story is it's it uh, takes place in the present time, and um, we have uh, I'm trying to think what her name is Sung Yi, um, who is a uh, she's a young woman and she's a translator. She's a Chinese uh, translator for the Korean, um, if I remember correctly, Ministry of Trade. And she's involved in a trade deal. Um, and she does really well. It was her first sort of time being in the spotlight. And she does really, really well. And then it flashes back, like, how does she know Chinese so well? So then it flashes back to 1993. And you have Dosuk and Jong Bei who are sort of hapless debt collectors. They're working in Incheon, which is a uh, suburb of uh, Seoul. Incheon is where the airport is, uh, in case you didn't know. And while well, they're debt collectors, they, they went after a debt owed by Myung Ja, who is the mother of Sung Gi, but at the back time. Back then, Sung Gi was nine years old. Now, I find it quite funny because a couple times they said she was nine years old. The actress who played little Sung Gi 
Couldn't have been more than four, maybe five tops. She still had her baby teeth, for God's sake. So why, you know, they kept saying nine, 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 nine. She was not nine. She was like four or five. Now the story is, we have Sung Yi's mother, Myung Jia, uh, is an illegal immigrant. She's a Chinese Korean. Is that the word you call her? Korean Chinese? She's a Korean Chinese. She's a Korean Chinese. Not Chinese Korean. She's a Korean Chinese. And she's there illegally, and she gets deported from South Korea, leaving little Sung, Sung Yi with Do Suk and Jong Bae. And what happens is they become, especially Do Suk becomes, Jung Bae, uh, becomes Sung Yi's guardian. And the two men eventually form this like family-like bond, and they live together happily ever after until Do Suk disappears and then comes at the end of the film and Sung Yi decides to look for Do well I guess she's been looking for Do Suk for 10 years and then finally she finds him but anyhow um here's the bottom line here he kidnapped her <laughs> you can't spin this any other way you know I went to see this with my colleague Liz and you know the, I, I was like the whole movie I was like <laughs> like this you know I was like he kidnapped her <laughs> You can't do, you can't, you can, you know, you can't spin this any other way. And the audience a couple times was laughing. I think they enjoyed it. But when the lights came up, Liz said, elephant in the room. And I went, I know, he kidnapped her. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just, this movie is horribly tone deaf. You might disagree, you might like it. I don't know. I just thought, he kidnapped her. Anyhow, that's called Pawn. I'm going to write something up later today. I'll post it on my website, howard4film.com. And um, check it out. Check out all my reviews on howard4film.com. Or my reviews like this, which are both on my website and on my YouTube page, um, which is also Howard 4 Film. Howard F-O-R Film. That's it for this week. <sighs> I honestly don't know what I'm doing next week. I don't think... Are there any new films opening? But Wonder Woman 84 is coming to Hong Kong a week before everybody else. We get it a week before. We're getting it on December 17th. So, watch out. I'm going to review it before everybody else in the world gets to see it. And I'll make it spoiler free, so don't worry. Anyhow, the, 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 um, a little bit of PSA here. You know, COVID is very bad everywhere in the world except for here in Macau and a few other places. Please take care of yourself and your loved ones. Please wear a mask wherever, whenever you go out. Social distance. Wash your hands every time you come inside from being outside or talking to people or whatever. It's really bad. Be well. Be healthy. Be safe. See ya.